Today's guest is known as one of the most connected persons in the Dutch startup ecosystem. He is a true citizen of the world, yet he has his office here in The Hague. Meet Hendrik Halbe, director of the Anand Group. So Hendrik, thank you very much for being here. Thanks. It's a, a, a real honor to have uh, one of the very important uh, people in the ecosystem of startups here uh, in The Hague uh, present. Um, tell me about what you're doing here in The Hague. Uh, I'm Hendrik, I'm from the Unknown Group, and we invest in startups uh, and in scale-ups, and we help big corporates with uh, dealing with startups who innovate themselves. So how, what does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, uh, a lot of big corporates like Shell in The Hague, uh, they want to innovate and they can do it of course by doing their own research and setting up new initiatives, but they can also look around the world for new technologies that they can work with or uh, put into the market and we help them with that. And I like that because I think a lot of startups, when you have a new technology or a new idea, the first thing that is the most difficult part I think is to test it in the market. And for example with energy, you need a shell or other big corporates that says, yes, use our facilities, let's test it together, because then you really can see what the result could be. And after the results are there, the money is easy to get in. So, so, so from, a, from a startup perspective, I, th that makes a lot of sense, and, yep. and it's great that you're doing That's it. That's why we're doing it. But why, why, is, why do, does a corporate need your help? What, what is it that you bring uh, to the table? In my perspective, I think uh, uh, innovation comes from the outside. So innovation doesn't come from the inside. Uh, it's always a lot of times outside of the big corporates. You see also that they change. And uh, I think if you're a smart big corporate, that you want to know what's out there and what's new popping up and keep it close to you so that you can benefit from it. There are a lot of smart people at big corporates, but there are more smart people outside. <laughs> and you have some very smart people that, that both find startups and... and yeah, we have uh, technology. Uh, the own system where we scan uh, the world. Uh, we have more than two million uh, 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 ventures now in there. And we're now also tracking all the founders. Uh, we have a competition called Get In The Ring, which is in 110 countries, uh, active every year. I think we are, in general, went in 10 years time to 150. So in all these countries, you know people, we have network ecosystems we tap into, and that way we can quickly s see what's happening. And I think when you see, if you're interested in in a certain topic and you want to know what's happening there. Uh, for example, I don't know, uh, new alternative proteins. And if you see in Berlin and Montreal, the same things popping up out of the ecosystem, you know in five years time, there will be something there. And that's what we do. Um, I think the big McKinsey's, they look for trends and high over. We look what is popping up from the bottom. And uh, yeah, I think that's interesting to know. Yeah, that's awesome. And, it, that, that's, and, and why then do you uh, do that from The Hague? Ah, yeah, uh, I was born in The Hague, I was raised in The Hague, I did my first bachelor in The Hague. Uh, I have a The Hague accent, I, am, I cannot lose and I don't want to lose. Uh, I love the city and I think it's a great uh, base to do the rest of the world. Can you make that, that love a little bit more tangible? What's so good about being in uh, The Hague? Uh, I love the city, I think it's a unique city. Uh, there's a lot of different eco uh, uh, communities. You have the, the, the public sector, you have the, the students here. You have the business, you have the, the embassies. So there's a lot of different cultures, different communities that mix together. And I think that's needed to come to new innovations and new stuff that uh, maybe can go to the next level. And, and, and if, you, if you look into that a little bit more, so, so, so how would you think like The Hague has helped you like, like build your business and how, how has it started and were you always here in The Hague? Yeah, I was first in the, uh, my, doing my bachelor and then already in that time I uh, got the opportunity to write a business plan and have some help in that. It was a small incubator, which you couldn't call an incubator, but at least they gave me a seat, a desk and uh, some uh, advice. Here in The Hague? In The Hague, Kallanstraat, which was not the best neighborhood uh, at that time, but uh, still I, I liked that I could do something and I got some uh, support. Wrote a big business plan, uh, which was stupid because uh, never what was it about? Uh, it was, uh, I, I was uh, a student and 15 years ago, something like that. Yeah, longer even. Fuck, Probably. I'm getting old. Yeah. 20 years. Uh, and then going international for an internship was very difficult and it irritated me. And I think irritation can be a very good driver to, uh, to do something. 
So I wrote a business plan if you could do something with international, international internships, international jobs for young people. Uh, and uh, now, now it's quite normal to go international, but then it was quite difficult to do something. So what happened? Uh, I went to Suriname for half a year myself. I wrote a business plan and then I said, hmm, difficult business. Uh, and I did my batch and I said, let's do still a master. So I went to Rasmus. I thought, let's do a master in entrepreneurship. No clue that I do, wouldn't learn uh, entrepreneurship there. <laughs> so I went to the Erasmus University, learned about the economy, analytical skills, learned about the entrepreneur and the role in the economy, uh, which was very interesting, but no skills for entrepreneurs. Uh, and uh, going forward, I created now my own university and a bachelor that I would love to have when I was young. Uh, it's called the Global School for Entrepreneurship. Uh, and that's what we do in Amsterdam now. Uh, and I hope to get, of course, to The Hague, but uh, for the first time we're now in Amsterdam. So, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And, and how, how did that journey take you from, from, from there to all over the globe and then still back here in, in The Hague with your, your head office? Yeah. Um, yeah, basically when I was in the university, I saw a lot of smart people. I saw a lot of uh, yeah, researchers doing great stuff. So I got involved in how can you get scientific uh, knowledge into business. Uh, I started to work in this scene. I got hired by uh, Twente University, Delft, The Hague, uh, Rotterdam. So that was a bit the first uh, step that I took. Uh, I did that to get more knowledge on how does it work and get a network. Uh, I did it for a few years. So how does it work? Difficult. Uh, I think uh, it's difficult for researchers because they like a certain topic uh, and how to make business with that you need entrepreneurs and to make that coexist is quite difficult and then there's a lot of incentives and people that think that they have gold or whatever so it's not so easy that people think. Uh, I think uh, if you really want to do it well you should put incentives in place and have the right people that love the stuff and take it to the next step. Uh, but you you build a cool business out of helping everyone. Yeah, no. Nah, so we right? did some uh, things there. Then the Erasmus University asked me to set up the Center for Entrepreneurship, which is now the Erasmus Center for Entrepreneurship. I set it up, brought it to a nice level uh, that it could uh, go on without me, which is still existing now. Then I said it should be a place in Rotterdam called the Rotterdam Science Tower, a 33,000 square meter incubator. It's still running without me, and I think that's what I like. If you can help with something that you can create and can go beyond uh, your personal uh, personal yeah, influence and can continue. And that's, uh, I think, nice about creating something, being an entrepreneur. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and then from and then, Yeah, and then I set up uh, again in the ring, which uh, I found it in The Hague because I had an office. I was working for Rotterdam and everything and, and all these universities and some international assignments. And I did it still from the Binkhorst. Uh, in the office there, so I will still stick to my uh, The Hague uh, yeah, ecosystem. Uh, but meanwhile, then I had the Rotterdam incubator, so I moved there. But uh, when I stopped there, I said, yeah, where shall I go? And uh, we decided to focus more on impact and on impact startups. And yeah, and The Hague said, yeah, we want to create more an impact ecosystem. So I said, yeah, I want to join, I want to help, uh, let's build it together. And that's why I moved here. Because I think that you also have to be here and and yeah daily uh, do something here. Absolutely. And now now you're here with with how many people do you have in your office? I just uh, had my uh, shareholders meeting yesterday, and we are over 70 now. Yeah. Wow. And we have 25 nationalities, which again uh, maybe uh, backs my story that the Hague is a quite international community. So we have someone from Turkey, Vietnam, uh, all around the world, uh, really. Uh, and, and, and you're helping these companies, but you're also, you're, you're an active investor now, right? Yeah, yeah. We have around uh, 30 investments. Maybe Naïf, you know, it's a day company, then the Scheveningen, uh, it's the uh, baby yeah. lotions. Uh, we have an uh, AGA, which is slang for the Hague, it's a cryptocurrency uh, trading system. And another, uh, Soltrex is also the Hague company, uh, they trade, um, yeah, damaged goods from the harbor that uh, is not yeah, that uh, the insurance should uh, throw away or that normally they throw away it's low value we try to get a better value and a better price for it so you're also so you're not only investing from the Hague but you're also investing in also the Hague. the Hague startups yeah I hope to get more of that and I um, invite everybody to visit us and to come here and uh, we try to help you've lived here for for a long time you've been yeah. here what what would be the the, the craziest like 
experience that you've had here that you maybe want to, that you want to share with us? You um, probably. Ooh, craziest. No, I think with Gendon Ring it's quite a, a crazy concept. Uh, we put two startups in inside of a boxing ring and we let them compete to see who's the better startup. Uh, I put it there quite American, quite a show and over the top. Uh, uh, which was quite uh, uh, a difficult decision uh, because I said, okay, in Holland we're not so open for that sometimes to do things differently. So I got a lot of resistance the first time. But uh, across the globe they liked it. We, we scaled quite quickly in three years to over 100 countries. And then people start to like it also because they see the success. Uh, but it was difficult. We found it here in The Hague. Uh, we did one time in the Haagse Hogeschool, so the, uni the university here. Uh, we built the whole atrium. Uh, we had all kind of uh, uh, big investors, uh, and that was quite also an, yeah, a thing to do. Uh, uh, do you do it in the Hague in the atrium? Build the whole thing. It was not really an event location, and uh, but we did it. Uh, the sound was not always good, but in the end, I got four startups that came after two years. Hendrik, I want to thank you because in the Hague, at that gathering, I got my investor, and yesterday we were both at the. Uh, Edu Rado, Edu, Edu Rado. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a boat company and they got the lead investor in The Hague during that event. Uh, and that shows that yeah, you can really help startups in this kind of systems. Yeah, it's really interesting and, and, and maybe also in, in terms of culture. Do you think that it's a typical Dutch thing that, that we are like really skeptical at first, but then when you are successful that, that we get behind the idea and then become really enthusiastic about it? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I move around the world because we're active in a lot of countries. Uh, we also have an office in Singapore with a business partner in Brazil, in Boston, in Dubai. I really have to change my attitude when I go there. So you have to really be a chameleon a bit. Uh, here I'm really trying to be uh, not too much telling about successes and everything because people uh, don't like that or something. I know it's not. Uh, but then when you become like when you do something really cool, then they, they yeah. Get I think when the again, concept. Right? So I don't try to be that I'm successful. I said the concept oh. works, and then they start loving the concept. I think that's the difference. Uh, yeah. We don't like the people that are successful in that sense, or no. we don't put it on a higher level. No. But I think when the concept works, they like the concept. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, and 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 maybe t uh, tell me a little bit about your kind of personal experience like living here. So 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 what is it that you like about the, the Hague in a, in on a personal level? I think it's a cultural city. You have some, some museums, you're close to the sea. I love the sea, so it's quite easy to go to the sea. There's a different Are you vibe. I would like to surf and no, I'm I'm working for, you have a lot of free time, I know, but I'm uh, I'm working a lot. <laughs> No, I don't. I, uh, I, 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 uh, I just don't have the time to sit down too much. But uh, I would like to do that. Yeah. But yeah. it's a nice place, and uh, I think that's also the Hague. You have all kind of places where you can go to. You can go to more the nature. You can go to the sea. You can go in the city. Uh, you have nice restaurants, uh, and that's I think what you need as a facility to move around. How has that that kind of has that helped you in, in also like the, the city itself? So not only the. The, 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 has that helped you in, in some sort of way in, in becoming who you are or has that, how, how has that shaped you? No, you can easily work together. I think that's also a bit Dutch, it's a good thing. If you say we do something, you can quite quickly do things uh, and set things up. Uh, with The Hague we set up uh, Impact Fest and we grow it in a few years to 1500 people uh, no, before Corona physically and an impact uh, event, uh, having all kind of impact investors, impact startups, impact programs and that's really now becoming a European wide known event. And I think that's the good thing about this kind of ecosystem and about The Hague. Uh, you can quickly do stuff and get things done together. And uh, if they say yes, then they will really do it. Uh, and that's, I think, something that you should embrace more and get things done. But what are things that, that need to be better here? So, so, so what, what, what no, are I you working on? I think on Impact Fest, which is uh, in October, uh, we should build on that and do even more. I think we have to attract more talent and also nurture the talent that we have and to help them to overcome the resistance of doing something that is out of the ordinary, that's beyond. And it's quite difficult because your father will say or your mother will say, oh, stay normal, that's good enough, you have a nice job. Your family will say that, your friends will say, why are you always working? And that's something you have to overcome. And I think you can only overcome that when you have people around you that are like-minded. And that's why also in my job, I coach a lot of startups, they can call me always. If you're a startup and you want to contact me, you can find me on LinkedIn. I always try to have this um, yeah, connection a bit because you're not alone. You know? There are other people that are as crazy as you and that motivates. And I think if you can do this, you can accelerate. So, so it, 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 it 
it sometimes might feel if you're here in 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 Europe and in, I think in in the Netherlands and, and the Hague yep. in particular, it can feel that you're a bit lonely when you're an entrepreneur. But what you're saying is we are there, but but you just need to find us, right? Yeah, that's also an entrepreneur. You have to yeah. find it's finding resources and connecting. But uh, I think we can maybe the serendipity of finding and 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 and, 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 and uh, you know you can increase by making events, uh, some programs, uh, some places where you can meet, and that can be even more uh, structured. And I think that we're working on that. And is, is that also kind of what you're working on yourself in, in terms of your future vision and what you're trying yeah, to Yeah, I would like here? to love to have our own building here uh, where we can have uh, also the startups around us and uh, yeah, be a, a bunch of uh, people together uh, trying to change the world a bit. The I unknown think, building. Uh, the unknown building, yeah. yeah. We go beyond together, and I think uh, that's also my vision. I think there's a lot of challenges in the next 10, 20 years, and I hope in a few verticals on food or energy we can make a dent in the university by combining a group of startups in the same field and letting them help and support each other. Because I think a lot of small ones can be stronger than the big one. And, and do you, so, so you already mentioned Impact and Impact Fest, and, and do you have other sectors or 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 areas where you feel like that is a really like a place where where you feel very comfortable in the Hague and, or that you want to move for move forward on. Yeah, we're looking at food, energy, and uh, workforce technologies. So uh, workforce technologies that a lot of people that are uh, having a physical job are uh, not able to work after 40 or get problems. And I think that nowadays technologies we should and we could solve that. And I think that also in my vision, the technology is not the problem; it's the adaptation by the market. And it irritates me a lot that there's so many good technologies by startups, but they don't get adapted because of the systems that are not helping them or the corporates that or the no, and, so and, so and, I and I hope to be part of that and hope to overcome these hurdles. And so how do you do that? Because I, I think a lot of entrepreneurs have these questions, right? They, they, they struggle, they have these great yeah, ideas. That's why we try to have a trust relationship with all of big corporates and we try to convince them to say, this is really something you should work with, give them a chance, uh, do a pilot, do this, do that, and then get to the next step and the good thing is if we say that it's a good startup it's something else than the startup says to this corporate it's a good startup or the government and that helps i think because of course the big corporate the government the market they get every day someone who says he has brilliant ideas and we can be more like of a yeah a channeling yeah. of that and, uh, so, so, so by so basically al al almost by being a broker between them you yeah. you you solve their biggest issue that is that there's I no think trust. I think business is about trust. Yeah. And if we can build trust relationships with both sides, we can be yeah, smoothing that process. And that's what's what, what startups will need to, to... Yes, because you don't have anything. You're, uh, you just have a name or a logo, but you don't have a track record, you don't have credentials. And for a lot of people, it's difficult to judge a startup. And I think one thing we're good at is judging startups, the team, the technology, and see if there's potential. Because you don't have a track record. A lot of people that are uh, in business, they look at a company and they look at 10 years track record, their P&L, their cash flows. It's not there. So how do you judge it? Yeah, it's it's and, and, and you do that. And that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and that's just making hours, seeing hundreds of startups a year for the last 15 years. Uh, and then you get some kind of <laughs> feeling. <laughs> and I hope to be right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's amazing, and, and I think you you are you so so you you just sold a company recently, right? Yep. So you're you're we're getting there, yeah. yeah. We're doing well. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. amazing. Uh, so, we, so we, I think our overage score will be better than other uh, VCs. Yeah. Also because we do more uh, with the entrepreneur, so that's we not only we don't look at Excel files, we look at the entrepreneur and see how we can help him. Sometimes that is maybe not always financially wise, but I think in the end it will add up. Uh, it's different philosophy. But we back the entrepreneurs uh, to answer their calling. I think that's the point. You have someone who really wants things and do that. And I love these people, the crazy ones. And if I can help them and be part of their journey, it's so, it's so fantastic. So The Hague is going to be the place where, where we're going to help these entrepreneurs that, 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 that don't do the, the easy things, but do the difficult things and then start. I hope the I'm there and I'm to support. And if you want to be part of it, join the ride. Uh, and I think you'll uh, not regret it. All right. So this is a, this has been an amazing story, and 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 then you know tell me if if you would digest this or or, or tr translate this into like one advice for young people that are coming to the Hague, what would you say to them? A lot of young people ask me like, oh wow, well, you built this, you built that, blah blah. What should I do? And it sounds overwhelming, you know, You're like these successful people or entrepreneurs. And I, I only say to them, uh, Johnny Walker, 
I say, hey, why Johnny Walker? I said, keep walking. That's the only thing you have to do. You know, a lot of people, they get overwhelmed and they start doing a lot of business plans and, and they, they say, oh, I have to do this and that and, and, and then they do nothing. I said, if you just go in direction, keep walking, keep thinking, but while you walk, you will meet people, do stuff and it will come. You will get opportunities. And, but if you stand still and be on your desk at home, nothing will happen. So keep walking. Keep walking and keep on believing in, in whatever it is that you're pursuing. And then you will get there. You know, if you're in the right direction and you like something, you go there. If you like to do something in the food sector, go in there, do jobs, be, in a, be smiling. If you're young, you can smell, you can ask a lot of questions. It's a great period. Nobody will blame you when you make a mistake. So make some mistakes. But if you make a mistake, try to solve it again. It will be a nice journey. Nice, nice. Well, this, this is the perfect advice. And then if you, if you look at our city as a place where, you know, what, what would you advise the city uh, finally to, to or what, what is your wish for the city where we're going towards? If you can have an overflow of talents, nurture the talents that are here, uh, get them inspired and get the international talents here and let them stick, I think then the rest will follow. It's all about people. So, so how do you judge a startup and how do you make a decision to invest in them? Now, uh, at Get In The Ring, when we founded it, we said, what's the most important five things you need to know about a startup? And I said, it's very, a lot of times I start with the idea and I give the technology, but we turn it around. We said the first round that you have to talk about is your team. It's all about the people. So the first thing I do is having a normal talk. I, I ask about their, their background, why they started the company, uh, what they are good in and what not. So I have to judge also the, the person and what he's doing and if he understands himself and where he's lacking or not, did he build people around him, is he coachable? That's very important soft things that you need to understand. And the second thing, if I would invest, can I drink a coffee with him or not? Because if you don't have a personal link and you cannot build a trust relationship, forget it. I had an investment one time, and after two months, when the guy called, I said, shit, the guy is calling. Oh, man. And it didn't work out. Because if you don't have this, yeah, click a bit and you, you link with each other, it's very difficult to build business because there will be heavy times. Then the second thing we did at Gendering is the business model and market. So is there a market there? Do we believe in the market? Is there a business model? And what is a business model? Does he understand a bit how he can make money in the future? Then if he has a business model, we look at cash flow and finance. You know, did he put money in himself? I, I think it's very difficult if he didn't some put some effort in it financially. And uh, how is his cash flow and that kind of stuff? How much do you need? Uh, and then the last part uh, in Gendering is freestyle. We just have some questions that we need to know about his belief and why does he do it and that kind of stuff. But the most important thing is the team and does he have the people in place to do it and to make it happen. So Hendrik, tell me, why, why is your company called Unknown? That's a good story, yeah. Uh, I got a lot of resistance about that because people they say, why, why, why should you call you Unknown? And they all start laughing. No, I want the name that sticks and that is representing what we do uh, without saying innovation startups and that kind of name because everybody forgets. And what I really noticed that I like to, and my company likes to go beyond what is known. We are in the future. And there's where the magic happens, beyond known. And that's why we call it unknowngroup.com. Uh, of course, it's a nice, I think it's a nice name and people remember. It also has some downsides. The first two months we didn't get any posts because the uh, post office uh, sent it back because it was unknown on, it, on the address. So, uh, but in the end, I think it's a nice sticky name. And uh, yeah, if people would like to work at our company and, and be involved in the unknown in the future, want to be part of the future and contribute, they can go to unknowngroup.com. We're always looking for nice, uh, enthusiastic uh, talent. And of course, if you're a startup and you want to make it happen and go worldwide, come to us and we will see if we can invest in you. Awesome. On that note, it's great to have you as a people person thank here. Thanks for the interview. And, and uh, thanks for being here. Thank you too. It's, um, yeah, thanks for the advice. And uh, let's hope that in a few years we see even more of the unknown group here in The Hague or the unknown group building. In five years, we have more successful people sitting in this chair that are home bred entrepreneurs. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs>